Hello YouTubers. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about some of the most exciting features that a lot of people are really really interested in in C Sharp 8 which is iAsync Enumerable. Uh, let's first talk about what the problem that we're trying to solve is and then let me show you how you can leverage this in, in, a, in a product into something that you may develop on daily basis, something you will need in a lot of applications. Uh, going forward. So what I want to talk to you about today Originally when people are trying to populate, let's say you have a table of Information and you want to populate that table with an API call So let's say you have a bunch of students a list of students and you want to populate a, a report on a table uh, For the grades of each and every one of these students you want to make an API call uh, bring in all the grades of that particular student and then return their overall uh, grade in, an, in, an, in, a, in a table. Um, that process might be a little bit uh, time consuming. So what some people used to do is that they would display like a spinner or saying please wait or loading until the report is ready and then they spit that report out in a table and then that's it. Uh, that spinner mindset uh, can be avoided if you start using iAsync Enumerable. What iAsync Enumerable does is that instead of you waiting for each and every student grades to be calculated before you spit it back out uh, on a table, what you can do is that you could populate the table with the results as they come for each student. So once you're done with one student, just populate the table and say, looking for more and then you populate the table and you say looking for more. How do we go about accomplishing something like that? Let's jump to the code here. Um, I'm going to start a Blazor application, ASP.NET Core application, and let's call it iAsync, let's call it something fun, weather awesome Bla app, something like that, doesn't matter really. And uh, you want to make sure you're enabling previews and you have um, .NET Core 3.0, Preview 7 installed. So we're going to just create that. I'm going to leverage the existing uh, Blazor uh, example. So when you run your application, your existing Blazor application, and you go into the Fitch Data tab, it'll load in some data that it just generated. But that doesn't really mimic you know, the, the example that I'm telling you about, which is going and processing some data and then spreading that back out. Uh, here's, here's the application right here. If you go to Fitch Data, it's, it's populating the data with, with some information, the table with some information. Now, if you want to have this be a little bit more realistic, let's take this. This is a very kind of convoluted code uh, that'll take someone probably three minutes, maybe less than three minutes to understand. Let's simplify this. Let's say this is create uh, weather forecast. So I just broke that out. They basically have your innumerable range. So it's creating a a list or, or, or like an array from one to five. Okay, let's simplify that one as well. Let's throw all that out. And let's go say four integer i equals zero and i iterates until four and i is accumulating all right and then let's create a list in here let's say var numbers equal new list of numbers let me zoom in the code a little bit here so people could see all right, and then for my um, code here, I'm just going to say numbers. Uh, why did I call it numbers? Let's call it weather forecast. Weather forecast like this. Here's a list of weather forecast, and then weather forecast dot add this guy here. list I don't need that dot to array thing anymore and we should be good so if you do control KD that'll um, arrange things for you and then what you want to return is weather forecasts 
dot to array. So we're just honoring whatever it wants us to return, right? And instead of index, we're just buying, passing the i. I didn't do anything other than simplifying what I have. Uh, I think it was task from result, and this is our guy right here. Just to make sure I haven't really changed anything, I just simplified the code here a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and run um, run the code again just to make sure to show you that from a performance standpoint or from a functionality standpoint, nothing really have changed. So let me run my application again. Here we go. Here's the application. Click fetch data and the data is coming back, right? So now, <clears throat> let's say retrieving the data takes a little bit of time, right? You need to go and retrieve that data and bring it back. So instead of this wither, I'm going to go in here and say task, uh, sorry, await task that delay. And let's delay every task about 250 milliseconds. And let's say this is the processing time. Just to show you, obviously, if one task is taking 250 milliseconds, there might be a chance there for performance. And let's say something like that is happening and you have an asynchronous call in here just to honor this uh, awaitable uh, thing. And uh, you want to return a task of weather forecast. Are we good? We're good. All right. And then in here, instead of create weather, you're just going to say await weather forecast. And you want to have an asynchronous call in here. Right, so you synchronous call, uh, and then here at the end, I don't think you really need that task from result. You could just return the weather forecast dot array. Something from a coding best practices perspective: if your lines are too long like this, try to break them down. And if your if your method is an asynchronous, I really highly recommend that you um, change the name to async like that so people know that they need to await that myth anyway just a little detail on the side i want to go on a tangent here but here's what we have so so we just added a delay and we made everything asynchronous so that means when we go and load our application there's going to be a little bit of delay but the problem with that is it's like the application or how most of the applications work when they make an api call is that's going to wait until the entire list is fully populated uh, it's, it's, it's fully retrieved and then they populate that result. So if you go in here, fetch data, look at this loading. Let's try that again. Loading, populate. And the more you do the delay, the more you see it taking longer. So if we change this into, let's make this even more visible. If I change this to 500 milliseconds, things will look a bit even uh, it'll be a bit even more visible what's going on here let's give it a second here here's the application fetch data loading and retrieve the data and that's what a lot of applications do even in your mobile app or in some of the largest applications out there, they say loading and it keeps spinning and then it shows the data. Whether it spins for a second or it spins for 20 seconds, it's still spinning, right? So let's, so let's improve that. Let's work on top of that. First of all, we want to use something called iAsync, iAsync enumerable with weather forecast as a return value. So that's the first thing we want to focus on. We're using iAsync enumerable. It comes in with um, very great advantage to turn your array into a stream. And instead of adding to a list, let's just return. So we're just gonna yield return our data here like this. And we don't need that guy anymore. Right, so this is our guy, uh, weather forecasts and right
All right. Um, so we have here the. I don't think we need that guy anymore. So everything is good. All right. So just one extra um, brace in here. And then what else? Why why this guy's uh, the async streams is currently in preview and not supported, and that's really what I want you to see. So because this is a C sharp eight feature and it's not really a um, it's something that's released yet. You want to go in your project and go into the edit project file, and in the language here, either you can type eight point eight point zero. I think that'll fix it. There you go. So what I did here is that I changed the language version into 8.0. I think there is another way to do that as well. I can't remember. It doesn't come to mind. I think it's something in the solution or the tools. Can't really remember, but that's one way to do it, right? There's also many, many ways to do things. Anyway, so we don't need that list anymore, right? But the way how we're going to interact with this on the front end is different. First of all, I don't know why my Blazor doesn't work with code, so I'm just going to change that to function. And now we have forecasts, and now this guy's complaining. And the reason why this guy's complaining is because it doesn't need the awaitable anymore, the awaiting anymore. And it also returns an IA sync enumerable of weather forecast. So let's change some of the things here. Uh, let's create a list of weather forecast weather forecasts like that and in here instead of doing that let's go and say uh, await for each bar weather forecast in weather forecasts weather forecasts like that and I'll come come that come to the point why this guy is not loading um, so this guy is like this, and then we want to instantiate with our forecasts in here. I mean, we could instantiate it up here as well. And then let's see why this guy, so this is for each, and then instead of with our forecasts, we want to throw that guy in here. So look what's happening here. I'm saying a wait for each. So for every item that's gonna back from gonna come back from an I async enumerable, right? We are awaiting every item and returning it individually, which means that for weather forecasts, every I forecasts, every item that comes back, we're gonna add it to that list. Right? And then we're gonna say to Blazor. Uh, that the state have changed to so refresh the state of the application. Let me just see state have changed. So what I'm doing here is that first of all we change this to weather forecast and change that. All right. So what I'm doing here, I basically am leveraging the power of turning what comes back from that list of weather forecast into a stream. And every time one item is done. I'm not going to wait for all of them to be completed. It's just going to accumulate and increase and, and add to the table as we go. So let's run this and see how that looks like. So instead of a spinning or saying it's loading, it's actually going to show you the full thing running um, and it's loading data as it comes. So let's give it a second here. There we go. So this is a low world and here's some magic for you. Let me zoom in that guy a little bit and then go fetch data. Look at this. So it's basically pulling the data and populating it as it comes. If you want to see this really in action, we could increase the delay here by 1000 milliseconds. Some people may say, well, on a, on a regular front-end application, I may just do a for loop and let that for loop keep hitting the API. That's really, that's really terrible because if your API runs out of data, it will keep spinning, which is not best practice. So as you can see here, we are loading, we're populating the 
table uh, using uh, in Blazor using that IA sync and innumerable. So this is why a lot of people are excited about that. There's so many different applications, uh, different ways you can leverage IA sync and innumerable. But this is definitely one of the things that I personally find very useful when it comes to large data sets and warm data that you have to process before you you spit out especially if you if you if there's no way to optimize around that that's definitely a, a greater options so that's pretty much it if you have any questions comments or concerns uh, let me know and uh, hopefully I'll see you in another video and thank you for watching